welcome back. Um, and welcome to our panel. Uh, Carolina will not join us today. Um, so, uh, first, I think I, uh, there are several topics that I kind of want to see here. Um, and, I, and I'm thinking about um, one thing is this separation between language and thinking when we talk about institutions versus the free field and where do we belong and how do we deal with that. Uh, it's maybe more interesting to talk from an, uh, from an um, educational perspective. Um, also um, thinking that uh, the acting educations have changed a lot the last hundred years and they are diverse. Um, so, um, what are we educating for? I mean, we have some kind of idea what 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 is out there and how these students and there is a lot of them here. Uh, how how are they going to deal with this transference to the working field? Are they even going to work? Are they going to experiment? Are they going to make their own performances? Are they going to go to theater? Uh, I don't know if I mean all of you are pedagogues, so probably all of you have some ideas about what is the Aim, not the aim of the education or the, your workshops or whatever in itself, but what 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 can them, your students do with what they get from you? That's a very open question. Uh, but is there anybody that wants to start? Have an idea? Come in. I think they can do a lot of things. Uh, I think they they can question our society in uh, all kinds of ways. They can work independently. They can work in many uh, con artistic contexts. And I'm of course talking from, from our education. Uh, I think they can also take, because we spoke, I spoke with some of you the other day about how many actors we're actually educating per year in this small country. And there's a lot of them, and the competition grows uh, all the time because there are more acting educations coming in. Yeah, there's a lot. And uh, so I think that we might also have to start considering and acknowledging that uh, an acting, acting education is a competence that perhaps can be used also outside the arts field and to explore what that could be and, you know, those possible, because it's a really, I think, uh, there are some skills and, and ways of dealing with reality that that our society needs. But for instance, questioning things and turning things upside down and saying, you know, any arts education. Uh, yeah. you know. In the in the Renaissance, uh, 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 for many very many pedagogues, the acting some acting education was considered to be a part of the of what is it called? The Bildung. Uh, the, um, what is that in English? Part of everyone's education, it should be. Yeah. yeah, everyone should kind of learn to act in a way. But uh, three years, three years to, to just do that without having that as a purpose. I don't know. It, somebody, Jonica, you wanted to say something about this. Yeah, now uh, he went on this, uh, just a small comment about this. I also agree that uh, to define actors just in, within theater, it's, it's a reduction of. This, this, the old field, I think. So I think for me, acting is the study of what a human being is, what does it mean to be human. So um, in that sense, I think that the actors can and have a knowledge and understanding of experience of dealing with being human that can be sort of brought outside of the field and can interact with other subjects like neuroscience, for example, like anthropology, <coughs> Sociology, but I, this is also something I believe. Also, I a lot of the work I do also is based on Gorgiev, and also this idea of the artist and, and, and the role of the artist. But it's something we can talk another time. But I just wanted to make something, uh, an example about the two um, different things for me between education and making art, like uh, very small. Can I do it? Yes. Is there a difference? And what is the difference? Yeah, just to show it what I think it is. Can I have three people here? Three volunteers? There's nothing to do, so just do come. Yes, nice. Uh, so, um, 
I showed this to the colleagues the other day, so some people have seen it. Um, for me, it's like, um, this is, uh, can I ask you, Jay, to stand here? I'll just stand like this. Let's say that Jay is applying to the theater school, right? And uh, he applies and he has monologues and stuff. So this is Jay. Miriam, can you stand here? This is Jay, and this is what Jay is creating, okay? So Jay is a private self. It creates something performative. We like Jay, and we give Jay a class in the school, and then he starts to work in the school. So the focus for me with the training is that during the three years, come here, we develop a new thing, choosing between here, which is something I call the artistic self, okay? So for me, the focus of the education is developing this artistic self. So that when you go into the world of cre creating, it's not just your private self that has an ambition to be an actor. We are all performative. We are humans. We can all perform. So, uh, but you develop this artistic self. And this art artistic self, for me, it means to expand your possibilities. It, it means to expand uh, your ways of, of, of beha behavior, of doing, of researching, also the things you talk about. So it, it's a, it's a prof professionality, okay? So when you are working within the creation, there is the private self that you know can be also uh, has bad days, good days, all the stuff you have in your private life. And then you enter in the working environment, whatever it is, a room or a space or outside, right? and you have a private, an artistic self. And this artistic self is bigger. It's like, you know, it's like uh, Spider-Man and what's the name of the guy? What is Parker. Spider -Man? Parker. Yeah, okay? So when you are the superhero, you are much more powerful than when you are the, the private self, right? So then when, when you become the, the, the artist, you can, you are, do things probably that maybe in your normal life you will not you will find not um, comfortable, right? And with this artistic self, you interact with other artistic selves and you create. And then there is the creation, the thing you create. And this is for me is the focus of the training to develop this with the students in collaboration with them. And then there is like when you start to to work with interact with your artistic selves and then you create together. And this is if, for example if. I will make a play with some people I maybe work in training with. I will not work on the artistic self. I will work on what we create together. So it's the meeting between two, ar two artistic selves. So the end result of uh, the end result of your training, the most important aim is to ha uh, to have us to develop a strong superhero artistic self. Yes, That's an expansion, a, a sort of a super self. Uh, Billy, you wanted to say something, but I, but I want Carmela to react on this. Okay. Uh, thank you. That was so clear. But where are you in that? As a pedagogue, you mean? Yeah. Wh which which self is? Which self do you bring to that? I mean, it's actually just really a question for all of us, not only for Gianluca. Gianluca, right? do you bring your superhero uh, artistic? I do. I do. I do. I bring the super the superhero. No, it's the same. I mean, I I would of course I have a prof professional self. So I would bring my artistic self and I would have different goals if, if I work in the, if let's say I have a vocabulary, that's how I call this interaction technique, things I believe and that I share. Through this share I hope that the people have a transformation so they embody this artistic self. Then they, if they use or not use the technique, that's, I don't care. But we do an experience together through this alphabet, okay? Then there is a possibility that we meet again and as artistic selves, we collaborate, and, and maybe we have a common alphabet, or we create a new alphabet, or, and then we can use this if we all feel this alphabet, or this common language, which is interaction technique, to create something together. But it's, uh, th th this is for me the difference. And I think it's very sort of, uh, you're very vulnerable as an artist when you create from your private self, because then every feedback goes inside the private self. And I think this why why I mean you don't need to go to a school to be an actor, please. You can just act. Everybody can act. My daughter is five years old. She's an actress. You just need to go there and act. But why do you go into school? Because you want to through experiences in a safe safe environment. You want to sort of develop this 
understanding of itself, which is an artistic self. This is my understanding of the school. Peter? Yes, thank you. Uh, uh, actually, to relate to what Camilla and Carmela said uh, in their interview, uh, this is very nice. Uh, I, I actually would put them facing each other and not in a line, kind of a, in a circle. And when you ask, where do I put myself, or will you put yourself in the circle? So there could be an interaction between your uh, private self and your artistic self and your piece of art, your creation. And you could be in the line and to be in a circle, it's the best way to be because you, we're all, all kind of equal in a circle always. So we should in here also be, but we're pretty in a circle, but to sit over there and back beside everyone, it's, uh, it's a very special place. And to have people behind you, it's also very special. But what I, I was also, when I was uh, asking for uh, the mic, uh, I was thinking about this, what should an actor learn, and what should we teach them, and what, uh, and so and so, and we just had a almost three year long uh, process uh, at the theater academy in Helsinki where I was very much involved uh, from my position in the reshaping or writing the new curriculums for all the programs, and we have 11 programs. And I was kind of a, in the head process of following all the processes. And, and the big problem with the writing new curriculums is always that there is, we have too much of everything, and no one wants anything. We, we have this feeling, and if we talk about actors especially, they can have any, anything in their curriculum, and there's so much that they need to learn. And, and we also know, we of course, know that there's speech, and there's dance, and acrobatics, and all, all these kind of stuffs. But then they need to have the philosophy, and then, of course, the acting part. And uh, the time schedule is so fully booked all the time. And then we want, okay, we write new curriculums and we want to have some space for this artistic uh, something to happen. And finally, we don't have any space because they need to learn everything. And I'm, I was trying so much questioning this because uh, we had a big crisis at the theater academy. Uh, it started uh, about 82 when I was in the second class studying there, 82, 83. I will tell something more about it on Friday, but uh, the crisis went on for five or six years, and uh, everything was totally changed. In the school, we got a new professor and a new rector, and, and he kind of uh, demolished everything. And it was, uh, it was both good and it was both very, very bad. And uh, there was some two or three or four years and some classes that actually didn't get any uh, teaching or education at all. They were just doing something. And uh, they were, didn't go to classes and we didn't have teachers. And, and it was really a messy time. And many of those students are very prominent actors today. And this is the big question. They didn't have any education. <laughs> but they are as good as those that we have educated this hard. So, so, I, I, it's, it's, so you can question. I don't know the answer. Short comment, and then I want to give the word to... I mean, it's, 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 of course, it's, but it, there's a big uh, part of this which is called natural selection. I mean, come on, you have a school like this one. We have 600 people applying. We're going to make mistakes, but you know, we're going to get a couple of people that really are unbelievably talented. And if you put somebody who's unbelievably talented to do something related to this stuff 24-7, in a way or in another, something will happen. 
doesn't matter if you're fat. No, I mean, this is the problem also in discussing pedagogically with the big academies in Europe because they can say, well, we have had the greatest actors in this country going through this school. Yeah, it's called natural selection. <laughs> And it's given by also the power. <laughs> yes. Okay, great. Uh, do you want to do you want the short response to the <laughs> Just be, just get it out. <laughs> I'm not sure if I need to say anything, but <laughs> I'm just going <laughs> to. important for some of the students in the room because um, it's actually about you who we're talking about and you're the ones that are here that this is this matters for uh, is this question of talent um, it's just a big old it's a big ghost you know in the room and it's it's uh, it's really the the judge the eye of the beholder when how do we use that term when we're deciding who gets to get on the stage and represent uh, stories tell stories and create new realities. So we really need to question what we mean by talent um, and what we're looking for when we bring people into an art education. I think we constantly need to be questioning what those, eye, those eyes are uh, looking for. I think that's, that's that, I'll leave it there. That. That's an interesting <laughs> question. I think we should uh, also uh, dig into it. But Pierre, I want to give the word to you now. You're waiting for us. Yeah, I, I think it's important to remember that we don't really know what the future has in it. Uh, when I started uh, in acting school, I was trained to work um, in institutions with ready written plays. And uh, uh, the world for an for actor in Sweden today is totally different. Uh, most had work in institutions. Uh, and I think. Uh, this is very interesting when you, you leave the, the structure of the school and then you learn more. I mean, that's not only in the acting schools, that that's probably true. Uh, so I, I think this listening is a very important word, uh, to, to bring in people that are ready to listen to themselves, to others, and to the surrounding society, and to the future. Um, in, in uh, North American, uh, in the Indian tradition of Native Americans, they say that a good chief is looking seven generations ahead. Uh, and, and it's hard, but we have to imagine these seven generations ahead. Uh, and we, I'm not going to live there, so I have, I have to help uh, the courage and the uh, curiosity and maybe the circle and the listening. Uh, that's the most important thing. And then, of course, we have to have a structure, too. Um, and I think this making a, too hard of a structure in the school, it, it goes back, if I look at myself, too, it's, it's kind of a power thing. I, I, I write in every hour that the student should be doing certain things. So I am in control. Uh, but maybe we kill the, the true learning. It's hard, it's, but it's very, very important questions. Thank you. Uh, I want the audience to also blend in if you want to, whenever, okay? So just, just if you want to argue or say something, yes. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yes, it's, um, it's to Gianluca, your example. I think, what, well, well, the way I understand it, it feels a bit like you're, um, that the superhero is actually just a reduction of the self. And if the three people would walk into this room, the personal self would have to stand outside the door and the artistic self would come in and the art would leave. And then you have the artistic self lonely in the middle. And I'm questioning, because we have all these human experiences that kind of then, through the reduction to the artistic self, aren't allowed into the workspace. And I wonder if that's um, in any ways fruitful. Okay, I didn't use all the passages to show this. Um, 
this is a paradox to show um, from where you listen to or where you communicate to. This also has to do with communication. Okay, of course you 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 have all your personal experiences. You're not cutting this out at all. But I'm, I'm just thinking, try, it's a way to externalize and, and visualize what is the goal, in my opinion, of the training, which is this expansion of your knowledge of yourself, is this trying to find out what are the things that sort of, what, what are the, the resistances, I call the, the walls that you meet when you create, and how you can find your own way to, to get to places where you maybe don't know how to get, and how to create the sort of um, uh, knowledge of yourself so that you can be interact with other professionals without to sort of be having this question about myself, can I do this every day? But to sort of, okay, this is, we're failing, we're not succeeding, we're trying, and this is part of my profession. So you create this sort of bo professional body that makes you sort of expand your courage and your abilities in the room. And this is, this is a professional body, maybe not necessarily you'll be able to bring at the cafe. So that does probably, uh, that, that doesn't make you better to get a girl in a cafe, but when we are in this room, you will probably do, be able to do stuff here that maybe you will never be able to do at a cafe. It's just about this. And then uh, also because I feel that sometimes in education we try, which is also a strategy that can be good, but we, we confuse the product with the process of expanding yourself through experience, to the, the artistic experience. So, and this is all, I also study as an actor, so sometimes we go in the room and we just want to make something good, which is very different. I can take my, ma my mom and put inside here and give her certain tasks and make her a fantastic performer in this product I'm going to make. I don't know if she's going to be uh, a better actress after that. So it's just a way to visualize this process of working with yourself so that then you expand your possibilities and abilities and then you create Okay, case. I think Camilla uh, should reply on this. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to think uh, how I deal uh, with this in relation to your uh, model. And I think for me it's not a split figure, uh, which I perceive this as being. And, I'm, I'm, and I have actually also questioned, why do we need acting education? Uh, because yes, your mom is great on stage. You know, and, and that has to do with the contemporary aesthetics and performance art, how performance art has influenced theater as well. Um, so maybe that's not what we need to teach them. Maybe we need to teach them about aesthetics and forms and relations to space and, and about how can you respond to the world you live in artistically. What is art rather than how good you are at whatever. My mom doesn't want to be an actress. Find someone else. To go back to talent, my mom doesn't want to be an actress because she doesn't want to experience the stress that comes with acting. Yeah. No, the point is that when you want to be an actor, you know, it somehow you want to live with the stress of being an actor. I think you are maybe yeah, talking about different categories here. Uh, yeah, I think it also is um, related to the question of talent is this thing of, you know, does an actor need yeah. to be good? Is that what we need in the theater? Do we need more people who are really good at things? Do we need, do we need more geniuses, more talent, more progress, more perfect? Is that doing, is that working? For me, it seems like Just a, a fundamentally different know. perspective on uh, maybe uh, art <laughs> or aesthetics. Yeah. What is art, what is aesthetics? And I, I just want to clarify that by good, I don't mean, um, I think there's a difference between being able to function, being able to relate, being able to communicate, being able to realize something. Uh, but to be good is, is such a vague, concept and I, I want to just challenge that if we think we know what we mean when we say good uh, just as a word as a, as a term uh, for me I think we are here back on something very important and that's uh, uh, how our perception of art 
what is art, how do we deal with art, how that shape our training or our, our work, and it actually have an impact. Uh, yeah, I I think that the probably the most important thing in uh, studying acting or art is that you get uh, whatever you do while you're studying, but you get means to research your uh, art. And uh, to talk about talent, I think it's uh, the more talented you are, whatever that is, but it's, if it's easy for you to be on stage, to create characters, to perform, uh, I think there's a big, big risk that you don't learn so much. And it tends to be like this, that people that are less talented, they have a, a happier career. Because uh, they need to work, they need to find, they need to explore things, and they meet uh, objects, so what is called uh, hinders, and they need to find means to come over them. And I think they find more than people that have too easy to find things. So if I have a student that is very talented, I'm, I, there's more problems. What do I do with this person? What can I teach him or her? Teach him or her to be less talented or to use the talents less. It's really important to be uh, bad on stage and to find uh, ways to, to, to not success. Uh, uh, and then it's usually like this that uh, we, we have, of course, uh, in all countries we have actors that have become, became actors some other ways. We call it in Finland that you come from the wild, wild woods and you just kind of become a professional actor and they, they can be very uh, good actors and very prominent and whatever. And this is a generalization, of course. But uh, my ex from my experience, uh, they are more co to, uh, to be uh, boxed in certain kind of, uh, of characters or types of doings. And I think that what you find when you study three or four or five years acting, that you find means to cope with your long, long career by time. You get ways to uh, analyze it, you get ways to explore new things and to question it. And that's, that's, that's the actual point in studying, what, what the studies are about, it's, it's an other question. Okay, you want to ask for a comment on that and then we have an audience that wants to interact. No, make your comment. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. Audience? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have so many thoughts now, So, but I'll try to go one of them. And that was in the discussion about the talent. Uh, and I think um, one of my m main problems with um, actors or acting, drama school, theatre in general, is the focus on the individual. <coughs> and that one individual, like when you go and see a show, you, s you pull out maybe one or two actors and you think, oh, they were good. You, it's rare that you go and see what I would like to see on stage is a piece of art as a whole, not an individual or a very one particular actor who's very good at pouring out their feelings. And I think this is a big problem in the training as well, that you, you elevate um, certain individuals while actually what we're doing is a collective piece of art. And I think that's very rare to see in the theatres. And I think one of the problems, this stems from this thought of some people being very talented. 
And also, since there are so many students here, I think it's very good for them to maybe reflect on what it, does it mean to be successful. Because it's, I mean, I've worked many years in an institution, and institutions and the theater in general are very, very conservative. It's a big, big machinery, so it doesn't necessarily, like there are, can be so many things or reasons why you don't get into an institution, for example. It can be the way you look, it can be the fact that you're not good at this or not good at that, many things. So there's like, I just remember it from my own drama school, you're so vulnerable, so it's so dangerous to think um, what is a talent or who is talented, uh, what does success really mean? Doesn't it mean that we create a piece of art? It doesn't mean that, oh, I'm, I can cry on command, or I can do this, or I can do that. It means when you start working and creating a collective piece of art, I think that's also when you develop your artistic self <laughs> through work. <coughs> Does it mean, yeah? Yeah, that's great. All right. I also just want to uh, mention an experience uh, that I had sitting in Dury. I was in Dury for the teacher school here in Oslo four years in a row, both first and second and, uh, and last round. And an observation that I made is um, one thing is the lack of language we have when we go to discuss quality uh, in, in, in what we see in someone applying. It's, it, and the other thing is which also, I'm probably going to insult someone. But uh, I, I think, uh, it, to my surprise, quite a lot of actors in the jury actually were the ones that were uh, had very specific uh, ideas how it, uh, a talent should look like. And, uh, some, uh, very often it was like copies of themselves. Very surprising. <laughs> so it's, I was, it's, it's, uh, it's surprising that uh, actors I had the feeling that actors is the last one that should sit in the jury. And of course, it doesn't go for everybody. I think some are more conscious about this than others. But this was a very interesting experience I had. And also through my uh, research and uh, seeing all kind of pedagogues, I also have a feeling that pedagogues working, I think, I don't think I met any pedagogue that don't reproduce a certain aesthetics, a certain style, a certain preference or what is performative interest in. They're always doing that. Uh, it's just the question is how conscious they are aware of it mm. and how do they deal with it. That's a big difference. But so I don't know, it's, it's always some sort of, so what I'm trying to say is this reproduction of ideas about what is a good actor, what is talent. I mean, we probably need to have some references, obviously, but how do we shape them and how do we communicate to them? Question. Okay. Well, first step is to tell that I am coming from somewhere. So, so of course, I have these glasses on me that I see certain things, and I don't see other things. Um, so, so it has to be communication. But I, said, I think this with talent, uh, and, and when we audition students, I, I think we're trying to. Uh, look for people that are curious, uh, that, that have courage, you can call it research, to, to go to the point where you say, I don't know. And also that uh, as a teacher or, an, or a team of teachers that we encourage each other to go to that point, we don't know. And it's hard because we don't want to be there, we want to know. So we all, we, we draw ourselves back. Uh, and I think in our society, stars and that. So, so we, we uh, want this talent. We want to say that, oh, there is a talented one. So we know what it is. So we, we want all this security and, and we build ourselves into a small, smaller, smaller spaces. What we have the, in, in Gothenburg, when we have jury, we always, we, we um, had, uh, reflections in the jury every day and said, what did you see? How did you see this? And now it was a, a, a and, and also question each other. Uh, what kind of glasses did you own today? Maybe tomorrow you should change your glasses uh, because you didn't see that or 
I saw that. Uh, but of course, it's a hard process. And it, it is a creative process to, to be in that, that too. But you can be honest, as honest as possible. Yeah. Um, it's actually just a, what I perceive, I want to give a compliment to the Nordic educational environment because I was working at New York University teaching School of the Arts for 11 years before I came here. And I sat on the jury for that program. I don't know if you all know that program, but it's a huge acting machine. They spit out 500 actors every spring. And um, it's supposedly the, you know, the top two ed acting educations in North America and very sought after and people are clawing at each other to get into this school. And there are really great teachers and you do get great opportunities. But the, the system for the audition was literally like one of us with one of you just three minutes, boom. Yes, 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 yes. Nobody discuss, no accountability. And, uh, and I'm sure that's not unique. I mean, that's a pretty good example of the, the best and how it's run. And um, so even though we're disagreeing on certain vocabulary or maybe we have different aesthetics within our context here, uh, I can see that so we, we should feel that we're already, because we discuss it, because there are juries, because there are longer audition processes, like a week, 10 days, or different rounds, um, that there's at least some politics. And, and at the academy, we, we really discuss deeply this vocabulary. We hold each other really accountable uh, when we go through the process. So I think it's an important difference that we're already working with. Uh, I'm just referring to, uh, there was a discussion at the internet a little while ago at San Francisco Denmark. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some of you saw that. And I think uh, the issue you bring up uh, with auditions, it's also one thing is you know the ongoing questioning that Carmen Lara speaks of, but also the careful how you put together the jury. Who is in the jury should take a lot of work and a lot of discussion, you know. Uh, the diversity of that group and they, you know, because we all have glasses, so you have to make sure you have people with quite different glasses that can see different things in people and they look for different kinds of people. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, but could you just say what I think, what I try to do here, what I, since I make the jury, uh, and I decide what the jury looks for. Um, the, the thing that has been important for me is, first of all, to change a lot of people. So we have about 10, 12 different people every year. Some people have to be from the school. It's an economy question. I can't just spam the amount of money I want. Some people are from the field. And when I'm talking about the field, uh, I'm thinking we have from the head of Black Box to you know, Yumi project to the most uh, institutionalized actor you can think about. I mean, it's like, it's a wide spectrum. So we always, always try to feel, to create a sort of different, both in generations. So there are people which, in different generations that have been, uh, that are working with theater in Norway and, and uh, with very different orientation. Also we, did, we have had, I tried to put in also dramaturg, some film people, some, so that there is also a different sort of, approaches. So, and then every time we try to have a meeting before where we discuss, try to try to discuss some words of what they mean and what do we look for, some sort of, what are we, try to create a common language because there is a sort of alphabetization every time a jury sits together, they sort of, with, from their differences, create an alphabet to discuss what they see. This has been uh, for me important to create variation, and in this variation, I just said last year, for example, I didn't sit in the jury, so I also put myself in this. So I also don't sit there all the time to not to be sure that it's not just my point of view. Don't but I can also say that my experiences from the jury was before you started to work. Yeah, no, just I, no, feel, I feel I had to, to say that. Um, 
No, no, I know. I, I just want to say it because I think it's important that uh, we also refer to practice, practice, because I feel we share a lot of uh, a lot of understandings and ideals about theater and stuff. But then you have to try to do it, and it's always economy questions, a lot of things, you know. And yeah. For me, questions. I just want to I just want to have a comment on this as well because I think uh, it seems for me hard to not reproduce ideas and ideology and aesthetics. It's just to what extent can we be conscious about what we're, what we're reproducing and to what extent can we open to our students about, okay, so these are my ideals. This is my ideology. I think this way about art. I think this way about aesthetics. You find out your way. Because it's all also something about that we live in a time, I feel, where, where, we, where the authorities pretend to not be authorities. And, and uh, so, it's, so it's also like, okay, but there is an ambulance here and, and be honest about it. And I think that's a good point, is awareness. Like, I, I start every class with the same question, and I, with this creating this contract. Like, I give them what I believe is my, what I believe in acting, what I believe is my interpretation of good acting. So we write it down, and I say, this is the con, what we're gonna work with in this class is this, and then you can do whatever you want to with this experience, but this is sort of the starting point, so that it's very clear what, from what aesthetical paradigms I work from, and that's, uh, I want to give the word to the audience. We have uh, two people here. Uh, do we, and we have a mic. Right. Yes. Uh, I lost my voice, but I'll give you a shot. Uh, do you accept many disabled students in your acting education, uh, people with serious handicaps, or do you have an idea of a neutral body, able to encompass all sorts of bodies and materialize them? Actually, I had that uh, question two times sitting in the jury. Did you, uh, Jonathan? No. No, you did. You, you. So who wants to answer? I cannot answer. <laughs> we, we've had that discussion. Uh, and when it comes to handicaps, it depends on what kind of handicap we're talking about. But, you know, there is also part of a, at least RBA program. You had there are certain physical things you need to be able to do, uh, at least at a certain level. It doesn't have to be great and fantastic, and we do take in, for instance, people who, you know, are not great movers, and they will learn a little bit more of it. They will still not be great movers, and that's fine. But you know, there are there are certain things, and but I, I think that we can definitely be challenged on that to uh, figure out how to incorporate people with handicaps in, in the regular training. Um, but actually we have had uh, people who have, I mean, who've gone through major transformations and physical, uh, gone through incredible physical challenges that haven't come forward and identified themselves as handicapped but are, are dealing with other kinds of bodies with other histories, and we actually look for that, I would say, we're open to that. Um, not looking for, for yeah, and looking for people who, ha who, who were going to bring complexity to the performing space and to an ensemble. Um, so so I, I, on the one hand, you know, yes, on the other hand, no, but it's, it's, a, it's a challenge where I think we're, we should still be meeting. And I would also add that we're, it's, it's cultural also because we're taking in people from around the world so when we're auditioning, uh, we're looking with different eyes at different people who come from different backgrounds. So we're not measuring <coughs> sort of like, can everybody act white, for example? It's, of, I want to also respond to this since I have the experience <laughs> a few times. And both times the, the, the people have ended in media, so I can think I can say a little bit about it. Uh, and, um, uh, and first of all, I think it's a problematic, I mean, what is a disabled person? already the term is complicated I think uh, one of the ones that we had well, had dance the other one had um, uh, were in a wheelchair quite paralyzed not only uh, feet but more as well and <coughs> and we found the, both of this one fur because we thought it is very interesting to have it, it is up, uh, as a bias um, uh, they didn't. Uh, they they came to second round. I think the next rounds I were not. So, but I remember our discussion was really like, okay, of course this is a possibility to give these people acting training, obviously. So 
there's a question about if they are open for that in training somehow that we have to give here. Is that so? So that was the question, and I, hopefully that was next jurors as well. So the answer for us was clearly yes, absolutely. Yeah, we and then um, Elina. <coughs> Yeah, um, I haven't. I, I've been in the jury, uh, the acting program, uh, many times, but it's a long time since I've been there. It's more than ten years, so I can't tell if you're curious about how things goes in Helsinki, how it is today. Um, uh, but uh, I know that uh, if you look the classes of the courses that have been selected, so it's uh, it's probably so that there are some kind of selection happening on this basis too. The hard thing in Helsinki, it's so popular to, to apply to the theater academy, there are some 1,000 per year that applies and they will take 12 and just Systematically or st uh, statistically, it has been uh, solved this problem. How to uh, assess 1,000 applicants uh, it has been solved in this way that the first kind of the first round is the heaviest one. So there will be uh, after the first round just around three three hundred left. And that means, of course, that the most mistakes happens in the first round. And it's the roughest uh, way to assess people. And they, it's, it's almost probably like in New York. I, I haven't been there, but it's a, it's a very quick process. People do something to a uh, jury, and there are several uh, kind of a simultaneous juries and things just go on very quickly during one week and it's apparent that there's most mistakes happen then and then there's 300 and 130 and so on and they have more time to give to the students or the applicants candidates yes. but you wanted also to say something i think the norm is changing as I said before, I used to say in the Swedish acting schools that you had to have the Swedish language good and you had to have a body that can be in the physical training. Uh, those things are taken away. Uh, but it's a slow process and uh, the problem is probably not the, the ones that are coming, the ones that are not coming from all different uh, areas that are outside this norm that is, is so strong still, unfortunately. We are getting very close to the end and as usual uh, the audience really want to then the audience is there. But uh, so I want to give the, just a couple of small um, possibilities for the audience. Yes? Yeah, Marshall, this is okay. a very short comment but it goes to the disability thing because I went to the Royal Conservatory of Scotland and last year was the first time they graduated a person in a wheelchair. So I actually find it a bit offensive when they say there's obviously physical things that they need to be able to do. For me, that's a question of the teachers being able to modify the training so that this student can do that. Because uh, our movement training was all about Lecoq. And she's one of the best Lecoq actors I've ever seen. She's been one of the most successful actors to go out of that school the last 10 years. So for me, when you say there's obviously things they have to do, for me, no, it's things you have to do to make that student able to be in that program. I agree. And, and this I would just say like she's yeah. also like changed the theater in Scotland, so there's been written new plays. So she's a part of changing the theater in Scotland. Interesting. So it's just Yeah, and which hmm. and, the and that's how you change the norm. Yeah. Of course it's and a I, slow and process. And I, I find it strange that it needs to be a slow process because I think that's just a matter of acceptance. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is you spoke about Einstein that you want um, an openness towards the students you know, about what are we looking for and all these things. And you've been talking for about half an hour about the process of accepting students, but none of you have said what you're looking for. <laughs> okay, that's an interesting question. That's a very interesting question.
question. Uh, we don't, idea, don't, uh, we don't, uh, don't have time for uh, to go into that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you want us to? Okay, let's do it quickly, and you just have two sentences, and they're not going to be long. Yes, two sentences. I'm going gonna, gonna to break you off after 30 seconds. What are you looking for? We are looking for to see to not the aesthetical things they bring, but some sort of uh, 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 basic qualities of, of um, sort of spontaneity and, and, and creativity and fantasy and imagination and the ability to be empathic. That's what is important. Okay, great. Come on. Uh, definitely looking for people who are curious and who are interested in working with other people, not only interested in themselves, <coughs> but interested in ensemble work, and people who have questions about the future of theater and would like to explore those <coughs> questions uh, cross-disciplinary with, as a base. Hmm. Yeah. You want to add to it? She's the boss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gila, you wanna, what are you looking for? Um, I, I can cope with that, but when I was sitting in the juries, we were usually talking about uh, potentiality. Is, is, are this, is, is this, has this person potentiality to be a student and to become an actor? And it's also always very, very hard to assess people because some have a lot of experience. They've been uh, ha having this hobby of acting from the youth and some uh, uh, just kind of found this love for acting and they are so unexperienced and to assess between these two got different kind of a types, the one that you have to kind of learn from, out from, and, and to, okay, this was too much sentence. Yeah. <laughs> you? I think I said it before. Uh, what we are looking for, what I'm looking for, is uh, individuals that are curious and that uh, is daring, uh, has the courage to be in that era that is the most creative, and that is when it is between chaos and order. Um, uh, <laughs> and, and also that they, they can be in the process together with others, of course. But that's the most important thing. It's, it's hard to see because you have different classes. I mean, I wanted to say something to you. Yeah, I want to add, besides actually being the boss and I think I'm doing it, <laughs> uh, even if I'm not anymore. Uh, I, I think I'm looking for many of these things that's been mentioned, but also uh, people are interested in, in questioning, uh, in, in turning things upside down and seeing what that makes. Great. I personally have been a contraweight, I feel, very often in the juries, since I've not been a boss, and since I have always been in jury with a lot of actors. But for me, it's the urge to communicate. Claire, most importantly. Um, okay, we are really over, uh, but Linda, did, do you want to say something? Yes or no question? <laughs> no, okay. It, because all we have talked about is for me about listening again, where you started. And I was wondering how we reproduce our listening. What is the most difficult thing with listen, listening? That's, it's a fantastic but question. And it feels very big actually. I, I'm, I'm sorry, I love your audience. All of you want to say something, it's fantastic, but we really, you really need to have lunch. Carmelaya wants to say something. I'm going to allow her to say one sentence. Give up your project to be heard for a minute. Okay. Remember this and we, we, we continue tomorrow, okay? Thank you, all of you. <laughs>